Yo, what's going on my people? You might be wondering where Cypherium actually fits in the ISO system. In this video, I'm going to be breaking that all the way down for you so you can know how Cypherium is different than any other cryptocurrency my people i hope you've been enjoying the past 24 hours because you know what you get over here another 24 hours as we said earlier guys in this video we're going to be talking about dlt of course welcome to our dlt month if you are new to our channel you may be wondering where cypherium actually fits into the iso system you might be wondering what DLT is if you're actually new to the cryptocurrency world. I'm going to be explaining all of that, guys. So please sit back, relax, and let me walk you through it. As you guys can see here, I have been, I mean, absolutely impressed with this new BIS Innovation Hub official publication. As you guys can see right here, this came out last month recently, and it is full, chocked full of really how the World Bank, the BIS, is really going to be addressing this central bank digital currencies and how they could really connect in this thing called the M bridge. Now this project that they were discussing right here involved the Bank of Thailand, uh, the People's Bank of China, and the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. Now if you've been following any of our videos really about Cypherium, you'll know that the People's Bank of China is also a blockchain partner and have worked together with Cypherium. So just diving through this thing, I'm not going to be holding up your time too much, but one big part to me that really stuck out, and because we're actually discussing DLT all this month to make sure you guys can understand the difference between really crypto and DLT you guys can understand really where that technology will apply if you are new to our channel really do focus on utility cryptos and the utility of crypto and as well that utility for ISO compliant cryptocurrencies Cypherium being one of them so what I want to show you guys is this right here the actual consensus protocol for this in bridge for this central bank digital currency bridge you guys are seeing here at the heart of the in bridge platform it is a private permissioned distributed system or deal validating the ledger is the process of accepting or rejecting transaction to the ledger and is done through the consensus mechanism which lies at the core of any DLT there are many types of consensus mechanism the most familiar is proof of work and proof of stake used in the public permission list Bitcoin and Ethereum ledgers the trade-offs and economic incentives in private permission ledgers, however are different from those in public and permissioned ones as private permission ledgers you could think of corda uh, uh, r3 recorda hyper ledger fat or hyper uh, ledger fabric from IBM, those do not need to provide economic incentives for public validators. One desirable property of consensus mechanisms is BFT. This BFT property is, is a very desirable part for uh, that, uh, a good part of the uh, consensus mechanism. Uh, the resilience to malfunctioning components that provide that provide conflicting information to different parts of the actual system. That's what BFT is, Byzantine Fault Tolerance. So just so you guys can understand, just you know where we're teaching you guys about with DLT, hope you guys are seeing it here. That's the underlying technology um, upon a certain platform. And you guys can see it here that of course, consensus is how you can actually have verifiability on that platform. So the MBL, uses a consensus mechanism called hot stuff plus okay which is a variation of hot stuff versus introduced in yin at all hot stuff has numerous desirable properties notably that it that its runtime a measure of the computational complexities of an algorithm scale linear with respect to the number of validating nodes. So you guys see that this M bridge uses a consensus mechanism called hot stuff plus. This contrasts with most other BF BFT and practical BFT protocols that are quadratic with respect to the number of validators, therefore require greater runtime for the same number of validators. So, on, so get this, guys. This is the next part I want to show you. This right here. This is coming officially from the Cypherium medium themselves, and they're they're calling it right here that Cypherium utilizes hot stuff. Hot stuff makes outstanding progress on BFT consensus, of which we we read for you guys previously over here. One of the most solid foundations of blockchain tech hot stuff BFT consensus in the lens of blockchain as it is formally titled improves upon the reservations that critics wage against BFT uh, blockchains and it does so without sacrificing the other aspects of the protocol 
In brief, half page of code hot stuff dramatically edits out the former inefficiencies of BFT. So you guys can understand that basically you have BFT that's being ran on, of course, Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin and everything like that. Now you guys are seeing it even with Libra, Facebook Libra, their uh, stable coin DM was utilizing Libra hot stuff hot stuff libra hot stuff bft in fact hot stuff makes bft more scalable by an order of magnitude as the algorithm's view change complexity is made quadratically faster a function of simply of simply the number of nodes in the network as opposed to the function of the number of nodes square as in the case of pbft so hot stuff does this by returning the original designs of BFT. Uh, now, right here is the real kicker in the connection I want you guys to see here. So, Cypherium is a serve a Fed now service provider, and this is the service provider showcase. Uh, you guys can see it, it's officially on their site. If you guys don't know, Fed now is going to be the 24 7, 365 payment system that's going to be operating here in the US. But obviously, that system is going to be running on ISO 20022 financial messages. So, um, again, if you guys don't know, Cypherium supports decentralized ID and the ISO 20022 messaging standard. So that's what's really important. Now, here's what I want you guys to see in the connections that we're making here. Uh, we believe that this this mechanism here, the DCIF or Cypherium's digital currency interoperability framework, this DLT here, OK, which is going to be operating it for, for processing the consensus for Cypherium, it's going to be that hot stuff. And this DCIF really allows those banks to leverage their infrastructure and basically harmonize their payment system. So to really show you guys what we're what we're saying here, where Cypherium fits itself in the ISO system is for the harmonization of payment system. This DCIF where it fits into the ISO system because it's going to be harmonizing for digital um, <clears throat> central bank digital currencies uh, right here you guys can see the uh, Cypherium DCIF is a novel approach to the challenges facing the addition of faster payment systems. That's really what the whole ISO standard is about, making sure you have faster, cheaper, transparent payments going cross-border. Any attempt at digitizing public money will soon have to reconcile the many functionalities of natural national currencies that private sector digital ledger technologies really just data. handle that right now basically that's what they were saying here in fed now in that showcase is that you guys are seeing it that central bank digital currencies are going to have to do at least the functionalities of what uh, sovereign fiat currencies are doing now so a fully functional faster payment system will have to be in will have to interact with a wide wide range of private sector industries as well as other national ecosystems or economic systems uh, not to mention central bank digital currencies. Cypherium's digital currency interoperability framework enables these necessary connections. Now, before you get to doubting and thinking like, oh, well, that's nice, but will it actually be utilized? First of all, please look through our library. You can see that Cypherium is a part of this group called the OMFIF, and about 93 to 95% of the world's central banks attend every one of their meetings. So if this OMFIF were to create their own DLT, their own crypto, currency to serve all of the central banks cypherium is it that's the reason why you have cypherium placed right here on the fed now uh, site so <clears throat> because cypherium is operating on that hot stuff it's able to process up to 10,000 transactions per second significant business benefits cheaper more lightweight deployable enhanced security improved traceability the DCIF allows banks this is another another one for you to let you know where it fits in the system the DCIF Cypherium allows banks to leverage uh, their that framework while at the same time connecting to other public and private monetary institution so you can see there's a hybrid connection here including other central banks private banks and public digital currencies the interoperability it's this dcif it's based off of the interledger protocol so it's no joke man cypherium is no joke at all okay <laughs> seriously at all i appreciate you guys being a part of this side man stay tuned for some more dlt content i'll holler at y'all later peace